Bill is an economist at NZIR. He has a long record of research, uh, long record of research and consultancy in primary industries. Uh, he was previously chief economist at PwC New Zealand, where he contributed to consultant projects in Australia, China, New Zealand, and the United States. He has been an honorary associate professor at Lincoln University. Bill takes a very pragmatic approach to research using economic tools and methods. Bill, you come up here while I introduce Stephen. Stephen, you're here. Just checking. <laughs> Stephen, the late ring-in. Uh, Stephen heads the Pacific Ocean and Fisheries team um, at the Ministry uh, of Foreign Affairs and Trade. He has been a career diplomat for 20 years and was a journalist here and overseas for 20 years before that. From 2018 to the arrival of COVID-19, Stephen was seconded to the Commonwealth as the Special Envoy for the Blue Charter, 10 areas of ocean action to, to address marine depletion across the 56 members of the Commonwealth. He spent all of 2021 on secondment to the Ministry of Health as Group Manager for COVID-19 Strategy and Policy and began his new role this year. He lives in Wellington where he is a keen sailor, diver and sea swimmer. Let's give it up for these two to round off our day. Kia ora, thank you. Um, wonderful representation of a river. Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, no Amerika aho, e noho ana o ki tāhuna ki te waiponamu, e mahi ana aho ki te New Zealand Institute of Economic Research, ko Bill K. Blake tōko ingama, nā mihi ki a uh, I was asked to do some reflections on the day, and um, I can see that I've got a timer, so um, I kind of had two choices. And I'm going to go for the funhouse mirror reflection first, so I don't run out of time. Um, in the challenge, I'm running a synthesis project. It's based on the blue economy, but part of what we're doing is trying to understand the synthesis across uh, EBM and Teo Maori and blue economy. Um, and today, I've been listening to uh, these presentations and discussions, and to me, they're hitting at two levels. There's a micro level where we're hearing about all of the really great work and the really great science and the things that are being developed that, that really can develop a blue economy. You know, we're seeing the actual evidence that a blue economy in the future is possible because we're seeing its, its, its ex existence now. And the, the panel talked about the uh, Patanga Roa as, as the great example of that. But the funhouse mirror uh, reflection for me is at the macro level. So in preparing for, our, um, for the project that we're doing, we looked at some of the blue economy work that's already been done in the challenge. And one of the things that struck us was the aspirations in that research that's been done. There's just an amazing aspiration to see a different economy. Um, and, and as the discussion this morning talked about, to get to that aspiration, we need different structures. We need different social structures. We need different um, governmental structures or different participation by government um, because the, the economic activity depends on the society and the culture and government and uh, as well as the environment. And um, listening to it today, um, I, I was reminded of the, the show, um, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Now, I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning of the show, it says uh, where the rules are made up and the points don't matter. And what I thought about today was in the economy, the points really do matter, but the rules are still made up. Um, and I want to remind you about Mickey Mouse. Um, if you had handed somebody a drawing of Mickey Mouse and you had told them, this is going to be valuable in 100 years, they would have said, come on, really? But Steamboat Willie first appeared in 1928, and that was the first appearance of Mickey Mouse on the, you know, on the screen. And Disney is still defending its copyright and trademark. Disney is still defending that asset today, almost 100 years later. 
And one of the things we heard today was, oh, you know, we're really worried about the value of these assets and people's decision time frames. They're only five years, it's only 10 years. What are we going to do? Well, let me tell you, Mickey Mouse has been valuable for 100 years. Our ecosystems, we should place the same value on them. We should make up the rules that have the value, have that kind of value. The other bit of the fun house, as the clock ticks down, is about um, the banking sector. Uh, when the global financial crisis happened, um, there was a lot of kind of navel gazing about the economy. Um, Craig, uh, my colleague Craig Pritchard, ran a, a conference, um, and I presented a paper there about the global financial crisis. And one of the things I pointed out was that that crisis split risk and reward. So the bankers, the hedge funds, they took all this risk and it blew up in their faces, but they didn't have to pay for it. They got paid out. The, um, the, the bonuses to hedge fund managers the year after the GFC was larger than all of the government bailout money. They took that money from the government, from the taxpayers, and they paid it out to their mates. So, and, and right now we're, you know, we're seeing another banking crisis happening. We've seen banks, uh, and there have been a few banks falling over, and it's the same thing. Those banks are being bailed out by government money. So don't tell me that the money's not there. Don't tell me that we have to wait for the investors to feel like there's enough money for them to get their returns. At a macro level, the money's there. We just have to get it out of them. We just have to show that it's important enough that the money has to go into those, into those um, uh, endeavors. Now, I might lose my license as an economist for saying these sorts of things, but it's the absolute truth if you look at the system as it is. So that's my funhouse mirror reflection as the timer hits zero. Thank you, kia ora. Kia ora, Bill. Kia ora, Pahia. Nga mihi kia koutou. Uh, ko rangi toto te maunga, ko Waitemata te Moana, ko Duchess of Argyle te waka, ko Stephen Harris toko ingoa. Nō no reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, I'm Stephen Harris, as you know from the introduction. Um, I wanted to start with uh, this graphic because that's, that's my workplace. That's what I look out the window each day to do. And I think it's a reminder of just the vastness of Moana Nui Akiwa and how interconnected we all are. Those, those kind of egg white effects around the countries are the exclusive economic zones of the, of the Pacific Island countries. And as you can see, in some cases, you can see the sea, but you can't see the land that sits in the middle and gives, gives those exclusive economic zones their, uh, their connection. Um, I'm not going to try and um, do much in four minutes. Um, I did try to take down a lot of uh, content when I was asked to, uh, to do this uh, uh, slight uh, reflections thing at the end of the day, and there's a lot of words in there. So I'm not going to try to do that. I'm just going to rush through. Um, and reflect on a couple of things. And one of the things I thought um, would be useful is to just put down some key words that I've heard during the day. They, these things have resonated. Um, we heard uh, Tom Mark Solomon talk about balance, and that word has bounced around in a number of contexts during the day. Integration, absolutely critical. Um, it's about um, not just uh, a demarcation at the coastline, it's about the connection between the Fenua and Moana, and we've heard a lot about that today. Again, um, Tom Mark's, Mark talked about um, from, from the river down to Tangaroa, and we heard the minister talk about estuaries. So we're getting that sense that um, all these things are interrelated, and we need to find solutions that are going to address all the uh, interrelated aspects of it. Indigenizing, uh, quite a bit of kōrero about uh, what we mean by that, and later on, how we actually get uh, more than intrinsic value out of it. We actually get some uh, commercial value out of it. Uh, that's the space I work in, international recognition, and someone made the, made the comment that we need to make sure that this sits behind some of the labelling, some of the acknowledgement that we're going to get out, which is uh, out of the international marketplace that's going to add value to it. Space. Um, 
again, a discussion around um, what we mean by, uh, or what our, what our alternative uses might be of the space. Um, there's uh, obviously discussion around marine spatial planning, but uh, you know, whose values are going to determine how that space is allocated? Uh, it seems um, a bit of a no-brainer when, when we're farming about 60 square kilometres of our 15,000 kilometre coastline and we have over 4 million square kilometres of uh, territorial waters, but um, we still uh, are going to have to have those sorts of conversations to reconcile different values. Um, regenerative, yes, um, that was a very strong theme, uh, theme throughout the day, uh, but regeneration takes time, it takes risk and it takes money. And we've heard quite a bit of discussion today about how we're going to um, incentivise making some of the right decisions. We know they're right, but they take time, they don't have an upfront return. And somehow we have to find the instruments and the motivation and the supporting regulatory framework to lead us in the right direction. Um, the, the, the notion of place, this is very localised, of course, you know, um, but the ocean moves around, so how are we going to make those connections? Um, Trade-offs, uh, does it necessarily mean that uh, one, one win is going to be another loss, or can we look at the notion of, of, of trade-ins as well, or, or reinforcing, uh, as we would do with circular economy principles? How do we achieve scale? Um, this is about momentum as well as spreading the good ideas, vulnerability, um, we're, we're talking about fragile ecosystems and how do we buttress those, how do we get them protected in, in law um, and uh, of course uh, in all, all the ways that we approach it. Data, we need the data to drive decisions. Without, um, without good data we're going to be um, second guessing a lot of the time and we won't be able to put priorities on things. Collaboration and coordination is absolutely critical, and of course there is, um, this is why we're here. We're trying to work out what our connections are going to be and how we can work together to try to come up with the right priorities. And um, finally, uh, there's, there's the notion of, of a vision. We, we've heard today, uh, someone asked the Minister about um, whether there's going to be an oceans policy, and in his answers there was, well, I think there was a, a sense that we've tried to do this before, it's pretty hard, but um, we need to do it again. Um, I've run out of time now. There's a lot more information that, that sits behind that, but um, I'd just like to sort of pick up on, on the point that the panel uh, ended on before, which is about leadership and asking ourselves what's our role in trying to bring together some of the new ideas that are going to take, uh, take this into a, a dynamic new space. Thank you.